I'm John Lunn. I'm a composer. I've been working in TV and film now for it must be close to 30 years. And to begin with, it it was a little bit sporadic, but very quickly I realised it was something that was going to take over my life. I'd been working in various forms of music, but I'd really liked the idea of being in control of the sound. Having my own studio and be able to record my own music rather than composing it on paper and relying on other people to perform it. Probably my most famous thing and the, probably the thing that will go in my grave is Downton Abbey. And then I've done the BBC Dickens series, Bleak House and Little Dorrit. I'm currently working on The Last Kingdom, which is a big Netflix show. The Last Kingdom is probably the thing I'm most pleased with. Just because of the challenges of it, it's set in the 9th century and of course nobody knows what the music was like in, in those days, so you kind of have a carte blanche. There were some worries about comparisons with Game of Thrones and obviously shows like the Vikings, which preceded it. They all used a sort of hybrid orchestral sound and so I started to suggest that I think we should try and do it all with synths. And to begin with, nobody was entirely convinced that, you know, you could make something like that work, but I stuck at it and it really, really paid off and it was exactly the right thing to do. The studio is basically in the basement of our family home in South East London. Initially, the whole idea of working from home was just when my kids were born. It was such a pressurised job. It's also an industry that's basically 24-7. So it was sort of all-consuming, especially in the early days. And if I didn't work from home then, I'd probably never have seen my kids. Actually, I quite like it, you know, making a cup of coffee and then just, you know, moving 20 yards down into my workspace. We moved into this house in 2003 and one of the first things I did was dug out this basement. And then I did employ somebody who knew a bit about acoustics and we did kind of build a studio. It was never really professionally done. And unfortunately, I was just so busy that we never really had time to tackle the issues. I discovered yellow technology probably about 12 or 13 years ago, and I did bring them in to do the acoustics, but of course, the room was already existed. It was already planned out. There was bucket load of gear in it. There was a limit to what they could do. There was so much gear that the sound was really hard for my engineer to mix because you could move your head like that a little bit and the bass would disappear. One of the other problems with the studio was that I'd never solved where either myself would be sitting or my sound engineer because I've always insisted on having a proper mixing disc and then I need a keyboard and a workstation to be able to write and at one point we had the speakers in front of my workstation and then we had the mixing desk off to right angles and it was never really satisfactory for my engineer to mix properly because his head was always kind of going like that and it, it, it was just a, a you know a bit shambolic and so I started talking to Yellow and then the pandemic started and it gave me time to think and I can't remember whether it was Ben or Pete or me who thought we've suddenly got more time you know should we be looking at completely redoing the studio Yellow and the building contractor had to have quite a lot of dialogue. The house is actually on quite a steep hill. It's kind of moving down 
the hill. And so there's, there is serious underpinning, and that's something we couldn't move. We had to devise a way of utilising that to our advantage. The underpinning, in many ways, is actually a fantastic speaker stand because it's just rock-solid cement. The less vibration in the speakers, the better. So Yellow devised a set of speaker stands that would actually sit on the concrete. And that's worked really well. I'd utilise the space a lot better and it sounds fantastic. The function of the studio is split into two. I'm mainly here writing, and then I have a sound engineer who comes in and mixes the music. The other complication is that we use a lot of analogue outboard. I don't particularly need to see all that, but my sound engineer does. So at the back of this desk, a lot of analogue outboard so we've kind of utilized something like this workstation for both of us. Yellow were particularly good at working out how that was going to work for the two of us and I know my sound engineer is very happy with it. One of the interesting things about building the studio was that certain aspects of it had to have several approaches for instance Every studio needs, it needs a lot of storage because there's lots of things, lots of cables, leads, headphones, instruments. And what was really good about Yellow was that they took that sort of thing on board at the same time as building the acoustic treatment into the storage as well. So that was kind of going on all the time. I never mix my own music. My sound engineer does it. When he's here in the studio working, there's nothing I can do. And so uh, several years ago, I actually got myself another studio where I could write and work. It's not as glamorous as in here. But one of the issues is that I need to have access to the same computer data as exists here. So Yellow have devised an issue where everything I do here gets synchronized up in the other studio and vice versa. And then to complicate matters even further, I've now got a fantastic assistant who in his home, he's got a studio as well. So anything he does in his studio gets mirrored here and in the other studio. So it's quite a complicated process. Data storage is massively important. All the data is now in a single array within the Mac Pro, which makes things incredibly fast. The only issue with that is if one drive as part of the array fails, it takes the whole system down with it. So we have to have another total backup system which is instant and then we have yet another backup system that also backs up everything overnight. When my sound engineer's working here, when he's mixed something enables me to be up in the studio, I can check it up there without interrupting his workflow. And so that's been massively useful. A key features that I've realised about a studio is it's never ever going to stay exactly the same because there's always going to need to be expansion. So these wooden panellings and the fact that they're easy to take off have made expanding the studio extremely easy. Now the fact that both my workstation and all this synth wall behind me are so close, I'm now using it more and more. In fact, it's the basis really of, of most of the stuff I do. There's no question that plugins have got better and better, I must admit. To me, I still think things sound better with analog equipment. Certainly in the case of instruments and software plugins, that has quite a lot to do with the tuning. With analog instruments, it's quite tricky to get everything bang in tune. But funnily enough, that kind of imperfection makes things more interesting, whereas the software plugins, you can kind of build that thing into it, but it doesn't naturally do it. And they're almost too perfect is the problem. Whereas with analog equipment, those little imperfections are really what make the sound interesting. One of the best features of the new studio is the fact that I don't have to bend down to get to the patch bay. A patch bay is really where everything in the studio all comes together. All the synths are lined up to the patch bay, all the compressors, all the preamps, everything, even the piano room 
up above me. The patch bay is really the beating heart of every studio. And it's really simple features like that that have made such a difference. And I think it's testament to the fact that although Yellow have completely built this studio from scratch, it has been incredibly useful that they were part of my process for the last 12 years. They knew exactly the way that I like to work. In fact, they probably been watching the way I've worked over the last 12 years and going, oh my God, we could make things better because that's one of the difficult things for them is that all composers work in such different ways. And the fact that we've had a relationship for 10 or 12 years made a big difference when it came to actually organizing this studio. I'm just so looking forward to be able to wallow in the sound of it and actually be able to hear things properly.